Hey everybody, welcome to episode 149 of the Nerd Out. I'm Lisa. I'm Ritsy P. We're girls, we nerd out, and you should follow us, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. You should email us, info at thenerdout.com. You should check our website, thenerdout.com. And we are a part of the Word to Your Mama Network, at W-T-Y-M-A-M-A, -A, home of the fabulous Ritzy Periwinkle. Gracias, Tia. Gracias. <laughs> also, home of badass merch, including a t-shirt, which I just received yesterday. Mm, I received my t-shirt yesterday. Oh, you did? Yeah. How'd it turn out? It turned out great. The quality of the shirt is awesome. I love it. They're really good shirts. Um, the packaging was all lovely. Everything was great. Loved it. Um, 10 out of 10. Uh, would buy again. Highly recommend other people buy. We will have a link to it in the show notes, but it couldn't be easier. Um, you just go, it's just spelled out word to your mama. What is the, is that for the website, the URL? Yes. Word to your mama.com. And then you M -A -M -A. Just hit the store. Yeah. yeah. Just hit the it's store. great. Thank you. And yeah, you're so, welcome. A lot of people, you bought black. Thank you I so did. much. Mm -hmm. You bought black. A lot of people buy black. And I'm always surprised because I was like, there's a bunch of colors. But everyone seems to buy black. I really liked the colors. And I struggled for, like, I. that was why it took me so long to buy one. Because I was like, I'm going to get red. And then I'd be like, yeah, yeah, I'm going to get red. I'm going to get red. And then I'd go to the website and I'd be like, oh, maybe I'm going to get blue. Maybe I'm going to get blue. <laughs> And then I think about it and then I go back to it and I'm like, no, 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 I got, I, maybe I'm going to get charcoal. And I just kind of like cycled through all of the colors. And then I was like, just shut the fuck up and get black. You know, it's awesome. Yeah. It's just well, also you so much, my, TI. yeah, my thing lately, my fashion vibe has been like sweaters, cardigans, jackets, whatever, flannel shirts, like shout out grunge. And a, and like a band t-shirt underneath. Right. Right. Layering. So layering. yeah. Yeah. So I'm like, uh, I like like a cool shirt and something over it. So this fits my whole vibe for that. Oh, I'm here. Yeah, I can see that. It I fits see as that. the kids say, and I feel as if they often misuse this word. It fits my aesthetic right now. Yes. C, C, C. Correct. If Correct. I hear one more person say, oh, that's aesthetic. I'm like, no, it isn't. Because that's not what that word means. <laughs> Chillins. Yeah. Well, so anyhow, I'm go buy a t-shirt. I'm excited to see it on. I'm, I'm excited to see a picture of, of you next time. in it. Yep. Or, you know, wear it for the next the Nerd Out. Yep. I'll wear mine. Oh, I will. I will. And, we will. And uh, my relative's co-host, Naisha, she has a red one. And that looks uh -huh. good, too. So I've seen okay. it in the red. Um, but yeah. So anyways. This, yeah, that was the first. It's the first nerd out of twenty twenty four. Yeah, what else is going down? Ti. Um, I bought myself a Christmas gift of a sauna blanket. What is a sauna blanket? Some of you may be asking. It, a sauna blanket is like a sauna sleeping bag for people who don't have the space or the money to get like a real sauna that's like wood and whatever. So you right. put yourself into the sauna sleeping bag and you zip it up and then you sweat balls. <laughs> and so I got one and I love it and it's awesome. So, okay. So are you going to, are you endorsing it? Like I, cause I'm, I've I'm, been looking at these for the past couple of months, which is crazy. Oh, I've been looking at them for years, but it's, you know, it's not, it is not a cheap toy. Um, no, no, no. You know, you can, I think that some of the cheaper ones are like 300 something and they go up. Um, right. I got heat healer, which I like a lot. I did, I did, I did the research and I like, yeah. Oh my gosh. I did so much research and I've been doing research for years. Heat healer has like the lowest EMF potential radiation, which is good because yes. you don't want to be like getting your sauna and then also getting cancer. Nobody wants that. <laughs> no. So it has that. It's like easy to clean, all of this sort of stuff. I really like it. The only drawback, and I don't know if this is just the case probably with consumer products like this, 
is right. that it doesn't get as hot as I would like it to get. Like I like it uh, to get hot and it right. allegedly goes up to like 140 degrees, but it doesn't like, I need to, in order to like really be like sweating freely, like a stuck right. pig, I need right. to be in there for like an hour and 10 minutes. Oh, and I've done like some commercially available, like at businesses that did that back when I was like super going to shape house all the time. And in right. like 40 minutes, I was like sweating. But so this one, I need to be in like another 30 minutes in order to really get my sweat on. So that kind of yeah. sucks, but also it beats the heck out of not having it. And even if I don't have a ton of time, a little bit of sweat is still something. Right. So what do you, so are you listening to something? Are you watching something? Like what's going down when you're in the. I've been, city? I've been watching things. And so like, I'll just bring my, I go, I lay it out on the bed. I have a nice little um, blanket that I line the inside with for when I get all sweaty. And so, and I like bundle up, I have like long sleeve shirt, sweatpants, socks, and I like wiggle myself in there. And then I have like a little pillow set up next to me and I put the, um, I put my laptop on it and I watch TV. Smart. It's great. Smart. Yeah. It's great. I love that. Yeah. So it's kind of like a two for one thing. You know, if I was like, probably like a better person, then I don't know, I'd meditate or something, but that's not happening. Right. No, no, we it's do what a win, we can. Win. It's a win-win. Yeah. You're, you know, you're uh, multitasking. You're getting yeah, things Yeah, I'm multitasking. Done. Right. Mm -hmm. that, that's a win-win. Awesome. Well, I can't wait to look that up and, you know, because that's something that's definitely something I want to do. It was either that or like the infrared pack, like, you know, where you lay on it, right? The infrared. Yes. I don't know. Yes. There's so many different things. But yeah. There are a lot of things. I do recommend this. But just okay. with, you know, walk into it knowing that if you want to, like, sweat, sweat, you're probably going to have to be in there for an hour plus. Right. Yeah. And they said, right, um, research says if you go in, like, a couple of times a week, you reduce your heart attack levels by a certain percentage. And then you go even more, it reduces it even more. And I'm yeah. like, come on. Come on. Yeah. Like... It, there's um, a sort of well-known study, I think that it was in Finland because they have a big sauna culture. And so, and, but, and I think, I don't think it was women, but I think it was men. And in this case, I imagine you can extrapolate the benefits to women too, but it was like middle-aged men who regularly saunaed had like much lower incident, cardiac events, um, cancer, all kinds of stuff. Like it, right. it it um increased their or it kept their like mental facilities longer like it has all of these really amazing benefits and as you say like do it a couple times a week do it five times a week do it however much you can and there's benefit benefits for days yeah, yeah. because you know I, I don't know if we talked about it on here we talked about it on the relatives heart attack and heart disease is the number one killer for women yeah you think it's men. yeah but it's women, but it's because it's, it's women. women, you don't hear about it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So yeah, you this know is how that very goes. important. You know how it goes. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. So, so yeah, cool. that's been, uh, been really into my sauna blanket. And another thing, I think I talked about this last episode, but it's been so long. I forgot. Um, I've been going through a lot of podcasts and cause I've been back at the gym. So I have more time that I'm listening to podcasts and I, I, debated whether or not I wanted to like shit talk a couple of podcasts that pe everyone online is like, Oh my God, this podcast is so great. And I listened to it and I was like, meh, kind of sucks. Um, so I decided that much like, um, much like the Kevin Smith's of the world, I wasn't going to be a hater. Um, so I'm going to be a lover instead. And I'm going to recommend birds of empire, which okay. is like, some of the podcasts that I've been into are more like serial fiction, you know, like story, right. like storytelling. Um, and so birds of empire takes place like 15,000 years in the future. And, um, it's like post, I think, I don't know, pandemic, nuclear winter, who knows what. And the pe the people in, at least in this area have broken into different tribes and there's, 
the wolves, the rams, the bears, and the birds. And they're like these different tribes of people who excel at particular things. And um, they and they all hate each other and are enemies. And it's like we've gone through the first season is sort of like plucking out an exemplary person that you follow in the tribe, someone who's an outcast, someone who's a whatever. And I know where it's going. They're all going to like probably converge and like do something really cool. But it's um, not only is it like very interesting storytelling, um, really interesting premise um i find it very i find it pretty fascinating it's not like a page uh an audio page turner really but i'm always like ooh, it's time to go listen to this this is good so i'm always nice. excited to do it highly recommend um too many commercials what the fuck but um another thing that's kind of interesting and noteworthy is in you know you can't exactly tell from people's voices but I can kind of tell from people's voices or I could kind of tell from people's voices that there are a lot of like people of color who they are using as voice actors. Okay. And, and I was like, huh, am I like stereotyping what's going on? And so I went online and I looked up the cast and I was like, oh yeah. Oh yeah. Super rainbow coalition. I love it. Love that. Yeah, I know. It's really cool. I'm super into it recommend if you are into like dystopian future mythology things like that love it so we'll have yeah. a link in the show notes for that one yes and in the same vein as podcast one of our favorite people that we've had on as a guest on the nerd out and i've had on as several times on words here mama lillian rivera award-winning author who's also written for star wars for 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 empire strikes back um she was a writer for a, a scripted podcast called love and gravity and i went with her to the premiere a couple of months ago and the podcast is fantastic and it has uh the craziest cast it has um pedro pascal's sisters in it um it's just it's a black it's a it's a black and brown cast and also LGBTQIA+. The writers are also of the spectrum. They were all of color. And I was like, how are we, gonna, how are we going to premiere of a podcast? It was at a theater in, in Westwood by UCLA. And it was a great time. I loved it. Uh, I totally recommend that as well. You know, going into that genre of super produced podcast is is my next thing because i i think i mentioned i listened to the jordan peele one that was supposed to be all the rage and it sucked it which sucked. one was that oh i have that on my phone yeah it was uh it was yeah bad. oh that's great to know is that the one that had um oh is it rami malik made i don't know if he was in it i don't even it it was a, the first okay. other one it was like all the rage you heard the commercial and every podcast you listened to was about that one and it, it just was okay. so great so that's why i had like low hopes for anyone else's and the only reason why i listened to love and gravity was because our girl was a writer and i listened to it and immediately i was hooked and i was like the quality is on point and i was able to meet the director and and the other writers and tell them like I was like, listen, I'm not going to mention any names. I go, but there's a very, very high profile scripted podcast that we all know of color that we all know that sucks. I go, and this one does not suck. I go, this one's great. The music, the sound design, the acting. I mean, it's, acting. I can't think of her name. She was, in, <laughs> she was in suits. It was just fantastic. So, um, Oh, that's great. Yeah. yeah. And then one thing, one thing, cause by the time, yes, and this comes out in March. So, I, at the end of this month, I will be presenting at the Ambies, which is the official podcasting awards. It's high, very high profile, and it will be at the, an LA Live. And so I'll be presenting. I don't know my assignment yet. I don't know which award I will be presenting, but yeah, I'll be there repping Word to Your Mama, The Nerd Out, and Relatives. Are you nervous? Yeah, sure am. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, first I was like, what am I wearing? You know what I yeah. mean? And then yeah. I, and then immediately, because of my eyeglass situation, 
I was like, okay, I wear my eyeglasses and then to read, do I go like this or do I walk on? It's like, I have to know, am I reading a prompter, teleprompter? Am I not reading? Because that depends on my eyewear. <laughs> I, I, I can see close, but I cannot see far. Do you know what I mean? Uh-huh. So, so yes. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. All right. When are, when are these? It's uh, March 26th, I believe. It's like on a Tuesday, I think. And I watched, not last year's, but the years before, and there's pe people presenting and some people aren't there. So like, I don't know, like Gail King was like on the, everyone has a podcast nowadays. So like some uh -huh. people were presenting via screen, some people won and were not in the, you know, so they won and did their acceptance speech via the screen and stuff like that. Uh -huh. So I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> okay. We'll that's see. exciting. And also yeah. an excellent bridge to a topic of conversation that I hope we get to later. And that is the Oscars. Are you presenting ACC? there? No, no, I wish. Can you imagine? <laughs> Can you imagine? I know. No, I cannot. I cannot. Okay. Um, so, well, go ahead. I was going to say, before we get into TV and movies, anything else? Yeah. So really quick, the, until the, uh, oh, you know what? It doesn't matter. <laughs> I'll cut this part out. Because the, the promo will be over by the end of yeah. February. <laughs> Rats. All right. So let me cut that. Let me mark this clip and let me <laughs> cut that out. <laughs> okay. Um. So TV, T.I., what's up in the TV worlds? I have watched a lot of television. It's been a while since we talked. And I know I was kind of struggling to, like, get some things finished get into some things. So I'm pleased to announce I've done, um, I've done you proud. Um, most importantly, I swore to you that the next time we meet, I would have secession finished. And it was great. <laughs> it was great. I was really dragging it out because I didn't want it to end. Right. You know, it's like, ah, but no, I thought it was great. And if we're talking about spoilers, that's on you because, listener, because it's been a year. It's been done. Um, it's been done. Uh, I thought, and I really enjoyed listening to the podcast as well. Right? Yeah. It was so, it was such a nice compliment. And um, yeah, I mean, what can you say? It was... It was great and it was awful and it was, of <laughs> course, and it was a surprise and it was right. everything. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Fuck. Yeah. That's yeah. one that I can't wait. I think maybe like in a year, maybe later this year, I will rewatch from the beginning because now you're looking at it with like a whole nother lens, right? Like you're in the yeah. know and you're like, oh, but shit. It was exhilarating. It was sad. It was just like, holy fuck. It was great. Yeah. Yeah. It was, uh, and all of the acting was so great and perfect at all times. Right. Like, and amazing. Kieran, Kieran Culkin deserves all the things that he's been getting because he was really, everybody was acting, right? Everybody yeah. was acting. But I think to see his whole story, his whole arc, the uh -huh. emotions of seeing him be a dick to, in an instant, revert back to that little boy. Uh-huh. The uncertainty, the love, the did it just, ah, oh, so good. So Yeah, good. and like, the, and I mean, while it was, while it was like awful, it was also at times so funny and funny in the way that I like funny. Right. Like at the very end and like, and so natural, like, I don't know how, I don't know how they managed like some of the repartee and like just the timing and all of it was like, it was so perfect because it wasn't perfect for comedy. It was just perfect for real life. Like yeah. when she tells, when she tells, um, um, why am I blanking on Kieran's name? Um, when Shiv yeah, tells, 
Right. Yeah, whatever. When Shiv tells him, like, I'm pregnant, and, like, without missing a beat, he's like, is it mine? <laughs> and it's like, fuck. Like, it's just so funny and, like, yeah. sharp and, ugh. Yeah, it was. That was a good one. And that was a good one. I do have a sibling, but it's a different dynamic. But being around other people that have siblings... The people that wrote that have siblings, <laughs> like yeah, like that. Where like sometimes you're just so in sync. Sometimes you're just always pushing the buttons and then alliances and this and that. And it, it's like they hurt you. They they hurt you the most, right? They tell the truth yeah. and they it's just like ah, oh, so good. Yeah, the writing is impeccable because, like you said, the writing is for real life. You know, those moments, mm -hmm. it feels like it's improv and they're always asked and yeah. it's rarely improv. They're reading the motherfucking yeah. script the way it was written. Yeah, but it feels like improv. And I've like they would say on the podcast, like, why would I improv? Like, how do you improve on the script? It's amazing. That's it. And that's what I was just like, oh, my God, the writing is impeccable. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Ugh. So good. The other one that I finished is Barry. Barry's um, yeah, great. Barry. I would say Barry was, was it three seasons? I think so. Three or four. Three I liked four. the first season and then liked the next one a little less and the next one a little less and whatever the last one is. The last season didn't do it for me. Right. I mean, right. I don't know how you, I don't know how you end the series. Nah, fuck it. No, I could come up with other endings. I thought it was, I, it went, I, I appreciated that they were swinging for the fences right. and like creatively they were going big and that's great, but I, it lost me, but whatever. I finished yeah. it. Good job, guys. You finished it. That's, that's, that's the main <laughs> part. That's the win. Yeah. Yeah. Any more, that's, that's the, win. the win. Take it. Um, but yeah, didn't, didn't love, didn't love the ending. Thought it could have been different. Could have been better. Um, no ho Hank, however, is just the best character of all time. Yes. Um, the only thing secession missed was no ho Hank. The only yeah. thing anything ever misses is no ho Hank. Mm -hmm. Um, and funny thing about no ho Hank, um, he is married to this lovely woman who is, I think, Romanian. Yugoslavian something like that and they were like I saw an interview and they were like oh how did you come up with the accent for Noho Hank and he's like oh I'm just imitating her family and her <laughs> and she's like stop right. it he's like no that's what I'm doing <laughs> and I thought that was really cute um I, I've seen some other things um totems is kind of an interesting spy cold war era spy thriller French okay. um, takes place in France and Russia and kind of a cat and mouse spy nuclear codes, etc. cetera. Um, very interesting. If that's like, if that's kind of your thing, like may I recommend if you're into spy thrillers, if you are like, man, I really liked slow horses or something else. And I want something that kind of fits the bill. I would kind of slot that in there. Slow horses, horses is better. Um, but yeah, that was that was pretty good. Totems. Bodies was one that I liked more than Totems. Um, okay. And Bodies is on Netflix, I think. It's a British series that is sci-fi, time travel, whodunit thriller. Oh, all your face. How about that? All your face. Yeah. Yeah. It kind of checked all the boxes and it's British. And um, it centers around a mysterious dead body that appears in London and the detective who's trying to understand what happens, but it's the, the exact same thing happens, dead body, detective, dead body, detective, and four different timelines. And it's the same dead body. Oh. So they're all trying to solve the same crime. Oh, interesting. Mm-hmm. And it gets kind of weirder from there, but it was enjoyable, great acting, um, super fun if you like, and it was only like six episodes or something. So if you're oh, into yeah. those like short, sweet, 
um, limited series, which I'm kind of all about limited series right now. If you're really into something like that, although they did leave it open for maybe another season if they wanted to, but yeah, bodies recommend two thumbs up from me. Um, not like two thumbs up, wave your hands in the air. You'll be okay if you don't see it, but you could do a lot worse. And, uh, then my, my, my next bigger thumbs up would be Mr. and Mrs. Smith on Amazon Prime. Really? Yes. Have you seen it? No, I have no, I have no desire. No one said anything about it. I'm just starting to hear rumblings about it. How the guest star, the guest roles are like awesome. I don't know who they are yet. I'm sure I'll see it on the dip top, but you're the first person in my circle so I'm excited to hear what you say because I had no desire. I Donald Glover love him. Yep. Home girl, I'm not a big fan of her. Okay, but because she was in um, Pen Fifteen, right? And you liked that? I think so. No, and I didn't. I didn't see it yet. I didn't see. Oh, uh, okay. But I had. I had a I friend who really is. liked it. I didn't. When she first came on, I was like. I'm not really feeling her. She doesn't like, she doesn't feel charismatic to me. She kind of is like, uh, but I really liked her by the end. And like, it was such, I have everything that I see that Donald Glover does. I kind of want to be annoyed by him, but instead I'm just kind of more impressed by him. Like this is kind of like, it's it's i wouldn't say it's a rom-com because it's like a super black comedy so like it's it's a like fucked up romantic comedy super great action scenes and it's instead of focusing on the action which is there there's good action it moves the whole thing moves really quickly they film it in gorgeous places the music is like a james bond ripoff um the whole like it sort of feels like a dysfunctional relationship coming together, falling apart, coming together. I don't know. It's like a sort of dysfunctional, toxic relationship, but it has like really genuine heart and it's really like vulnerable and it's funny. And I'm like, I just, he seemed, I would have thought that he was too cool to do something like this. (laughs) And I was like, no, I like that he's not too cool to do something like this. Nice. Like he does not. I'll, I'll add it to my list then. If you yeah, recommend. Yeah, I, yeah, we just kind of binged it over the last week and, um, and really liked it. Super fun. Definitely two thumbs up. But then my two big, all fingers up in the air waving, like I just don't care, is Gen V. Gen V is totally the best thing that I watched in the past since we talked last. And Gen V is a spinoff of The Boys, which I also love. Have you seen The Boys? Yes, I've seen The Boys, but I don't think I saw the last. I don't think I finished the last season, though. Yeah, that's right. You have seen it. This is this remind. Okay, so this is a spinoff that takes place at Godwin University, where um, young superheroes go to go to college to figure out like, are they going to be crime fighters? Are they going to be in entertainment? What are they going to mm. do? Um, and it's about a group of college students who are sort of thrown together, Scooby Gang style, and like. All of their characters are great. The acting's awesome. It's like fun, twisty, turny, demented, loads of like raunchy filthiness, loads of like people's heads exploding, etc. Like it's so violent and it's so like filthy, offensive at times that you just have to laugh out loud. Like I totally loved it. I had a super fun time watching it. Oh, awesome. Gen V, people, Gen V. Yeah, people, yeah. everyone that, a lot of my friends are just like, it's just good times. So it's yeah, on my super list. Good times. I just haven't been in that, in that zone, I think, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So sorry. I just talked your ear off about all of the things that I'm watching, but hey, no. there's some, there's some good stuff in there for the party yeah. people. And if you guys yeah. have seen, I want to know if anybody here has seen some of these, tell me. But yeah, what about you? I what are you know. watching? So there's a lot of things I couldn't remember them all, but something I just finished that I was just like, ugh, 
ugh, so good, is Fargo season five. Fargo season five. If you haven't watched it yet, have you? You haven't watched it yet, Ti? I don't have Hulu right now. Okay, please watch this. You will not be disappointed. I even got Rocket to watch it with me mid mid midstream midway. Okay, because he was like, "What is that?" And I was like, "I was like telling him about this story." I was like, "This is so good." It is like female empower. I don't know. It's just like the levels. It's I don't even want to give anything away. It is so good. Okay. It has Juno Temple, who was in um, Ted, Lasso. Ted Lasso. John, she's a now. I'm like, oh, I want to see her in all the things. A uh, John Hams uh -huh. in it, who plays another character that we haven't seen. Like it's extreme to the other side that he usually plays. And I was like, oh fuck, I'm I'm a little bit afraid. I'm a little bit afraid. Uh -huh. Dave Foley, <laughs> old school Dave Foley's in it. Uh -huh. Jennifer Jason Lee. Where has she been? So for those Gen Xers or those that have seen The Breakfast Club, she's the one who shakes her head to do the weird one that shakes her head to give the use dandruff as snow. She <laughs> is phenomenal in this. You're going to love her character so much. I was just like, where has she? We need this all the time. And then Joe Keery from Stranger Things, the guy with the long hair, he plays uh -huh. a despicable character on here. And I was just like, oh, shit. Like, you're seeing everyone's acting chops. Like, uh -huh. the, it's fantastic. There's the action. There's stress. There's thriller. It's just like all the things. And uh -huh. I was like, how are they going to wrap this up? Well, we only have one episode. Like, how are you going to wrap this up? They wrap it up. Bloop. Bloop. perfectly yes it's fantastic amazing i love it so much so that i listen to armchair expert um uh, you know a podcast that's dak shepherd and monica padman they loved it so much as well that this week is is um fargo week they have juno <laughs> temple on they have john ha like all in the same okay. week and then they have uh noah the uh the main guy who put the thing i think his name is noah the guy who uh, okay. wrote it and and the showrunner and stuff. So yes, Ti, if there's not, if there's anything that you know, get that get that discount for Hulu. Do yep. a trial. Okay. All right. All up in your sauna, uh, you know, sleeping <laughs> bag. Yeah. And you'll be like, oh, I'll do two hours in here, no problem, because I'll watch two episodes back to back. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I guarantee. I guarantee. <laughs> <laughs> great okay i'm sold um Sweet. and you know what's coming up hmm. the oscars the oscars are coming up they'll be happening this weekend by the time this drops they'll be happening this weekend what are we doing like i am so far behind on oscar viewing uh you, you I've, look, it looks like you've seen a lot on the list. I've I've been uh, I've been applying myself. <laughs> um, in one weekend, I think it it might have been like MLK weekend. We right. saw Oppenheimer, Killers of the Flower Moon, and Shit. Extraction. Extraction is a movie with Chris Hemsworth where he plays a I don't know an extractor. It's like a super cheesy action movie. We watched all three of those. Um, survey says our favorite movie was Extraction of the really? three. <laughs> yeah. Oppenheimer was, wait for it, too long. Too long. Killers of the Flower Moon was, wait for it, too, too long. Too long. <laughs> and, like, I thought that Ranger Ted put Killers of the Flower Moon really well when he was like, they focused on the wrong people. Those people aren't that interesting. And I was like, yeah, that's kind of it. I read the book and the FBI agent who's played by Jesse Plemons is uh -huh. arguably one of the more interesting people in the book. Like, I don't, you know, the um, Leonardo DiCaprio character is like, you know, I guess he's like a tortured a little bit because he's a bad guy and maybe he thinks he's, a, I don't know, whatever. Like, I, and, and like, I kind of don't care. He's a f terrible person. So, but like the Jesse Plemons character in the book, for those of you who have read it, 
um like that fbi he was like one of the very first fbi agents he's a former texas ranger he was known for being like having an like really strong moral compass he had to deal with a lot of like bs stuff with um with what's his noodle who ran um the fbi and like to dress up in women's underwear oh, um yes, yes, yes. so so like he's a really he was a really interesting guy he would have been more interesting more about the woman molly would have been interesting mm-hmm. so i was i was yeah i was kind of meh on those did you see either of them no, I'm, I, I want to. They're on my list. And I was like, mm, I, I know I need the time. Right yeah. now, I don't have the time. I need to invest a big chunk of my day, of my life. I do want to see. Uh-huh. I've been wanting to see Oppenheimer for reals, for reals, for reals. I actually wanted to see it in the theater to get the full experience. But I'm, yeah. like, oh, I'm okay to do it at the comfort of my own home. Um, uh-huh. So how to you is Robert Downey Jr.? He was great. I thought he was great. Um, I think that he's what? Uh best supporting actor up for that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, well, I have my list here of um actor in a supporting role. Let's see what I've seen here. Um so I feel like yeah, I, I don't know. I might give it to him. I see also the two movies that I saw that I liked more oscar baby movies are um poor things in american fiction liked them both more than oppenheimer and killers of the flower moon um american fiction funny satire heartwarming like satire and heartwarming is can be i think kind of hard to balance and i think that they do a good job it's very bittersweet um And there were there were laugh out loud moments in American fiction for sure, and um, poor things. My final review of that one also too long. My final review of that one was um, I appreciated it more than I enjoyed it. Oh, got it. Did you read the book? No. So, um, I think it was Lillian. She was she saw it, but she read the book, so she's interested. Uh-huh. And me watching it because I haven't read the book. I've heard nothing but great things about it. That everyone loves it. Da, 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 da. Um, and, you know, I've been watching all the roundtables. It's my favorite time of year to watch all the the actors on actors. The, yes, the I love that. The writers, yeah. All that shit. So I'm learning so much about these movies. So I'm excited to, out of the two, American fiction and poor things. You uh-huh. knowing me. Uh-huh. If I had limited time before the Oscars and I had to choose between those two, which one do you recommend out of those two? Poor things. Poor things. Just because it's like. It's, it's like. Different. It's different. It's like, you know, how effectively they did it. I don't know. Jury's out maybe. But they did like different things. Emma Stone, I think, was so good. Um, Mark Ruffalo was great. Like, I think it was, um, you, I was never bored. There were a couple moments where I was like, they could have cut the, they could have cut this part out. But (laughs) overall, I thought it was interesting. It was kind of thought provoking if you wanted it to be, it was just eye candy if you wanted it to be. Love that. It it could be a, a movie about empowerment. It could be a movie about taking advantage of people. Right. Just go into it blind. I was like, I don't know. There's a woman and. I think it takes place in the past, but I'm not sure. And the costumes are cool. That's all I know. <laughs> so there you okay. go. I, I will, I will watch. I'm, I'm going to try my best. I still have time to watch as many as possible. The only ones that I've watched so far are past lives. And I talked about that movie. You have to watch it. If you haven't yet. I, yes, I, love that movie I totally so am going to. Yes. And we could discuss probably post next month. And then um, I saw Barbie. Which I didn't think I was going to watch. Oh, uh-huh. Did you watch it? I did. So we didn't talk about it, right? No. I don't I think, know. I think that we did. Ryan Gosling. Maybe we didn't. Ryan Gosling was fantastic. Was fantastic. So great. In the movie. Yeah. So yeah. great. And I, and I love it. Someone was like, I'm not going to watch it. It's a commercial. 
Yeah, that's what I thought too. And yeah, sure, it always it's, it is a commercial, but it's saying something, and I like the way it was saying it. Was it the best movie ever made? No, but I love the attempt. I loved the there's these moments. I think especially as a as a woman, you watch it, and you're just like, mm hmm. I hear mm -hmm. that. I get that. Uh, you know, when when Ryan uh, when Ken goes to the real world and he's just like, oh, <laughs> this is how it is over here, and he's getting empowered. I was like, yeah, that is that is. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, and it was fantastic. Um, yeah, no, no, no. And I also think that it's very, very smart and very savvy of Greta to cast America Ferrera in the movie and give her such an amazing part when there was a lot of controversy about, you know, sisterhood of the travel. I mean, not sister of the traveling pants. Um, I forget the name of the movie that America was in. And then her movie and people are saying they stole da, 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 da. Who cares? But mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? It, it, respect. Like I, I like the way she moves. Uh, been seeing all of the round tables about, you know, and how thoughtful she seems to be. And, I know her relationship with her man and now he was still, that's crazy, but that's personal stuff. Yeah. As far no as comment. Like, what yeah. she, you know what I mean? But as far as like the movie and, and how they got this made, like it only could have been made by and pushed through by two powerful white women. And then yeah. they brought in, they were able to bring in the full color, all the people. And I was like, yeah, that's what we need to do. Work together work together yeah so and yeah. i i was really impressed that i was like i'm i'm surprised that mattel signed off on some of this see, like see. like the with all of the executives all men and all white men <laughs> and like you know and they're like why would we know i don't know like and just how clueless they were and it was yeah. like oh uh, yeah uh-huh yeah, it was it was a very it was a cute and fun movie that also had a little bite to it, and I thought that it was I thought it was great. Do I think it's best movie? Probably not, but I thought that give them a nomination. They did an interesting thing. But I think, but I think in the whole grand scheme of things, it's an important movie. It's an important yeah. movie on for so many different for so many different things, right? And it's it's a uh -huh. movie that I'm going to watch with the supernatural bear. He was like, you yeah. watched it? I was like, yeah. And we're going to watch it together. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Because I think it, 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 it breaks those big concepts down in a way that's like, oh, you know? Um, so, yeah. Yeah. I, I appreciate that. Um, I'm excited. It's been a little, I don't know if we'll talk super quickly about the fashion. Fashion has been a little lackluster on these streets. Except for... <laughs> Uh, Coleman Domingo, he's killing it. Him and his stylist yes. are bringing fashion to the red uh -huh. carpet. So I'm hoping that people, you know, our people are going to come with it at the Oscars. It's been all these award shows. I'm like, what? What? What is this? What? What is that? You know? Yeah. So it's yeah. the Oscars. Come with it. Yeah, I think that like I love paying attention to and you know, kind of watching the various award season fashion choices and like what I have the thing that it seems to me is that like people are either people are, are in some ways playing it too safe and in otherwise I'm like what are you doing yeah. like Who this that to what, you? Who yeah you? why do you why do you think that this is appropriate like there were especially exactly. in the grammys is, is always an, an offender in that case and i'm like look i get it you want to be edgy you want to stand out i get that that's cool but this is not it this is not right. the direction you should have gone so yeah it will be interesting um to see what people come up with and even people like the thing that i one of the things that i find so entertaining is that like even women who are like stunningly beautiful and show up on the red carpet sometimes i'm like who 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 hurt you why did they like 
Like, Margot Robbie's a great example. Everything that she wore for, like, the whole Barbie press tour was great. But her style, whoever styles her, whatever she decides to wear, is like, ooh, really? You are the most beautiful woman on earth. She's gorgeous. Like, she's gorgeous. could you not wear something that looks like that, please? So, yeah, I'll be fun. It'll be fun to see how things go for red carpet for the Oscars. I'm here for it. Yeah. And for the second year in a row, I will be at TFCon. Oh, and really? You know, yeah, I'll be uh, the the third year in a row, third year in a row. I'll be there. Second year in a uh-huh. row at the Oscars at the same time on Sunday. So, ugh, it sucks. But I, t- you know, Supernatural. I was like, yeah, I'm giving up watching the Oscars the way I like to watch the Oscars. So. We'll figure it out. Maybe I'll just be in the car on my phone or something, but <laughs> we'll see how it goes. But uh yeah. Yeah. So uh what's the what's the word, T I? Where where are we at? Um, I don't know. I got some other things to talk about, but it's nothing urgent. So I feel like right. we can we can pick it back up. Um, we're closing in on like 50 minutes or something. So we can pick it back up next time. It's not going anywhere. I got some books, a trailer for a movie coming out that I recommend you check out. Okay. I'll talk. I'll, we'll just mention it really quickly. There is a trailer for the movie monkey man. Okay. That I highly recommend if anyone here is a fan of action movies that you go check out as quickly as possible. It is um, it is directed by Dev Patel. <gasps> I love me some Dev Patel. Yes, he stars in and directs it. And <gasps> say it less, was say less. <laughs> it was going to be a um, direct to Netflix thing, which you know would have been great, of course. Right. But, um, wow, I don't know why I'm blanking on, um, on all of my, uh, names today. Jordan Peele, Jordan Peele saw it oh. like when it was halfway done and was like, no, 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 fuck that. Bring me on. We're going to take it to the theaters. And it is like John Wick in India. It's amazing. Mm. Like the trailer okay. is so like frantic and Dead gorgeous. Patel, anything that he's in. It's the that. trailer. I'm like, I don't even need to see the movie. That trailer, two thumbs up. So, um, yeah, super cool. Everyone go watch it. It's so bananas. I love the trailer. Okay, I'm excited. I can't wait. And, yep. um, yeah, anything else, T.I.? I think I'm good. I hope everybody's well. I hope you guys enjoy the Oscars. I hope you interact with us. Yeah. Let's talk, uh, let's talk, let's talk fashion. Let's talk whatever. All right, then. Peace out, nerds.